Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Hello guys, today we will talk about linear regression in practice. Today we will write code uh, in about linear regression. So I wrote here a little introduction. So we will write linear regression with using normal equation, ordinary least squ uh, square method, and gradient descent. For Bayesian, maybe later. So let's get started. I don't want this session to be too long. So let's go to terminal and we will use uh, Jupyter, Jupyter notebook. Okay. So let's go to desktop, uh, new uh, Python. Here, title, we will the title, linear regression. Congratulations if you have watched previous videos. In previous video uh, about linear regression, we wrote, uh, we proved how uh, we can solve this linear regression problem with normal equation. Normal equation. So today, today, uh, I created small synthetic data set. So we will uh, dive into that uh, specific problem and we will solve in two ways. First of all, import numpy. Numpy as np and import matplotlibpyplot as plt. So we have imported that, and okay, we I will give uh, sizes p dot array, and let's say. Uh, one four one six one seven one eight seventy five and maybe one one zero zero one five five zero two three fifty uh two four fifty four one four twenty five one seven zero zero it's like the size of house imagine it's size of the house and i will give price it's our target why I am using this NP arrays? Because they are more convenient than uh, standard Python uh, lists. So price, how much maybe? 245? 315? Maybe it's like uh, $245,000, maybe something like big numbers. But for now, like simple numbers. Okay, 315, 279, 308. 199, 219, 405, 324, 319, 255. I think the size is equal. So let me to check. Uh, okay, I will use sizes dot shape, and I will use price dot shape. Okay, true means that their size is equal. They are good to go. So we have this data set. Let me to plot it, plt dot scatter sizes and prices. So this is our data set, like this is our uh, x dependent value, and in y axis it is our prices independent value. No, no, no. Like x is independent, y is dependent, vice versa. So here uh, in x we in x axis we give some kind of value size of house and our model should should predict the price of the house. Pretty simple uh, problem, right? So now we should create such model which will learn from our uh, from our data set and it will draw line. It will draw a special line and using by this line this equation we will find the next uh, the, the price the optimal price of the house given the size by given the size so i think clear uh, we have price we have size this is our um, plot one thing if you want to get rid of this thing just put this comma dot it will be done 
Mm, actually, we don't need it now. Okay, we have sizes, prices. So before diving, let's normalize it. What normalizing means? Normalizing means that this range is very huge. So we will put this range into small numbers. So before doing that, let me find sizes mean. How to find sizes mean? In NumPy, it's very easy. Just mp.mean and I will give sizes. And sizes, uh, what? We have mean standard deviation. Standard deviation is a difference between, the, uh, it is a value of a point which is, which uh, talks about the difference between mean and this value. Standard deviation mp.std like very very simple very like straightforward okay this is uh, mean standard deviation and okay I will say norm normalized size sizes equal to what I will take sizes and I will subtract the sizes mean and I will I will take it and I will multiply and I will divide I will divide it to sizes standard deviation and let's see the known size so here we normalize it the data set where it is the range is not huge, but it is very small, around zeros, around ones, around minus ones and ones. So this is very crucial and it's very good to not face uh, numerical uh, issues. So we have sizes now for prices. It's the same, prices equal to mp dot mean, prices mean, I'm sorry dot mean prices I will say prices standard deviation mp dot standard deviation of prices and norm price this is equal to is as we say it it's, it's the same logic prices minus prices mean and uh, we will divide to prices standard deviation that's done that's all about uh, normalization we did normalization now let's get let's build this x matrix so it will be np.v stack and i will say i will use np once for what for creating intercept I will use norm sizes dot shape what shape one for shape one means number it means the column it doesn't mean number of uh, it doesn't mean the number of examples but we need number of examples so we will create this and ones for intercept uh -huh. once and then and then we will also use norm sizes so we have one column second column norm sizes this one and we want to see it that's good and we if we will make transpose okay now it's much more clear so what we are doing here is that uh, we created once just for computation to, to create this x matrix because as you know uh, y is equal to what there is uh, x we get x and weight right and in weight we have 
fives and error. No, no, I, like it's. I'm making it complicated. I will say you know like this. Well, we will say like x zero to multiplying multiplying weight one plus x one multiplied weight one. And and yeah, wait zero. And you, we have x one. We don't have x zero. We created this x zero as ones. It's intercept. So we have x now. And what is y? Y is the same prices. Prices norm norm. I think we have created everything we need and let's see the plot I will plot it I will say it's getter and I will say x no, no, x will not work unfortunately because it is matrix now but we will use norm sizes and norm prices I think this is the same so Normalization means that uh, we will just change the range, but the value, the um, impact of each uh, value stays the same, doesn't change, remains. Okay, we have scatter. So now time for, time for, mm -hmm. first linear regression with OLS or normal equivalent. Last time we proved that uh, in order to find these weights, these weights, we can use x to x uh, t, no, x transpose, x, 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 uh, how can I write, x transpose, multiply to x and we get minus one we get inverse of it and we will uh, get dot product of x and t and dot product of y it is from uh, our last lecture so let me to switch and show you exactly exactly how it will look like uh -huh. No, this is later. So it is that we have special formula. Last time we proved that in order to find this weight, we will use x transpose dot product to x. We get inverse of this resulting matrix, and then we will get another dot product of transpose and y. So. Do we have x? Yes, we have x. Do we have y? Yes, we have y. So we need just to implement this formula and we will get this weight vector. And we will use this vector or matrix. Let's see how what will be. We will you get this weight and then so it's solved. So then we can draw this uh, perfect line. I don't know how it actually it looks like, but we can draw it just by computing this uh, formula. Let's go back to Python, to Jupyter Notebook. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So what we said, weight is equal to what? So we need to find uh, x transpose. So transpose, uh, is switching the uh, rows to columns, columns to rows of the matrix. So in uh, NumPy, it's just we are using a method t, xt, and for dot product we use this at, very convenient, and we will use x according to formula, and we get inverse, minus 1, it should be minus 1. In order to get inverse, we can use numpy np.linalg and inf, if I don't mistake, yeah, 
selling out in and we are getting inverse and if we get this inverse and then we will get dot product again to xt and dot product to y yeah that done that's done so our work is done so this is minus two corresponding to bias this 7.5 it correspond to the x values so what i mean is that there is ones and zeros right and the actual values the one it will be this one so it means that this is independent value this doesn't change even if x changes x changes here but one stays always the same so we have minus two and seven so it's according to the formula calculation of formula so now so now what we can do is that we can get prediction by using x dot weight and our y predictions are predictions so and why and now what we can do is that we can find uh, you know the error or but i think better to plot it right let's get the I will plot it so we say it, it will be uh, norm sizes norm um, sizes and prices plt dot plot and for plot uh, we will use uh, norm sizes and so it is in normalization uh, in normalized form right so we have norm sizes and if i plot y plot label equal to normal version color equal to red so let's see so now it is in normalized form but anyway according to our uh, normal equation which i showed you previously we calculated the uh, we calculated this line and we use this uh, we found these weights of the our model using the formula and we apply these weights to x and we are getting the predictions it means that next time if you want to give new value you will take the value and you will normalize it according to, according to our mean and standard deviation and we will give that normalized uh, normal and we will uh, transform this normal transfer this normalized value into the matrix and we will give that x matrix or that we will add the one and the value and we will multiply these two values to the weights and we will sum it and we will get the prediction and that prediction is is the prices of house so that's about normal equation i think it's, it makes sense mm. so if we want to transfer back to uh, or original uh, coordinate system, not normalized system, so what we will do is that y predict, why we have y predict, right? I will trans transfer this one to original one. Denormalizing, normalization. So we will say y predict the norm equal to, we will get. Uh, y predict and we will multiply to prices because we divided last time to standard deviation and we make minus this time plus prices mean y pred the norm so that's we are getting back the values that's it about linear regression linear regression is simple 
but yet powerful. What is the benefit of this normal equation? As you see, it's very fast. But imagine if we have tons of data sets and calculating this inverse matrix, as you know from linear algebra, it is computationally expensive if you have so much data. So what's the solution if you have a lot of data and you want to be efficient, computationally efficient, and the solution here comes is gradient descent. So let's go to gradient descent. Gradient descent method. Gradient descent method. So about gradient descent method, listen carefully. So what we need about gradient descent? So we need the learning rate. From our previous uh, videos, if you check previous videos, we uh, tried experiment with different learning rates, but better is this value. And what we else, what else we need? As you know, it is iterative algorithm. So we need epochs or iterations, thousands. And what else we need? So we need this, uh, you know, gradient, as we say gradient is equal to what? gradient so x next equal to x minus learning rate multiplied to gradient right multiplied or dot product just assume there is this multiplication and what is gradient here gradient is our cost function cost function Function. And we will we will we need to get the derivative of the our uh, cost function because otherwise uh, we need this kind of uh, performance measurement. As you remember, if you go back, what is learning algorithm? What is machine learning algorithm? So we need this performance uh, performance measurement p in order to give our computer system to learn, to improve, because we can see the measurements of each iteration. So I'm going back to the camera and this is clear, I think. This is not that complicated. I think you get the grabs of the terminology. So as I said, we need cost function. We use cost function denote as this one of weight is equal to what? So we have linear regression. So we can use many different uh, measurement performance uh, algorithms, formulas, and the one of the most popular is MCE. So we use this one, we'll go with this one. So what is that? It is one divided by two M sum I equal to one, and here it is M, and y hat predicted value and y i i square this is mce mean square error it means we are getting mean and it is squared error and we are getting the difference so we can see the difference the error here so we have performance measurement uh, P, so it's, it measures our performance, right? Yes. So model makes this prediction, we measure the prediction. So as you know, gradient descent is iterative algorithm which finds minimum of the function. We need to apply, we should apply here the, the uh, derivative. So if we apply derivative, before applying derivative, we can rewrite this function, this equation, into what form, you know? So what is y? We can say this y hat is equal to x, assuming x is matrix, assuming x is matrix, and weight. So it we can rewrite it, we can rewrite it as will be 1 
two pan you can see it twice and we will use x weight minus y t transpose to x weight minus y i think it makes much more sense right now so now what we will do is that we will open it and eventually 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 we will get one two m x t weight t x weight then minus two x t weight t y plus y y t clear make sense okay now we open this and now let's find derivative of this what it will be one two n so from here we have weight 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 square we will get the two two then it will be weight x t to x minus two here it is weight only one so we will just drop it because it's only one one minus one zero and it will be one x t to y plus this one it is constant so we will not touch it we will omit it so now now what will now what will happen is that derivative uh, here will be we can get two out of this square and we will out of this bracket and then we can uh, cross it with these two so we will have one m and it will be so we can get you know this one out of brackets and this one out of brackets so we can get xt and x it's good technique to write x and weight minus y so this is our final 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 uh, cost function gradient so now we will apply this function to our full code let's go back let's go back I think like we are wasting um, so much time. Okay. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. So what what I have said is that def our gradient function is what. So we receive. Uh, we should receive weight, right? So we re should receive weight. And it is equal to what? It is equal to mm -hmm. m one divided m is what? M is length of the is number of examples. Examples. So here we will say it's that for now just um, just assuming but not not uh, not uh, it's not final thing so for epoch in range epochs we will you what we we need x we need this weight equal to weight minus learning rate and we get the multiplication to the gradient and for gradient we give to gradient what we need to give to gradient the error no Prediction. Prediction means what? X. We need to give a white w, w, and this should be this next equal to this one. This one. 
and we need to give initial uh, weight right initial weight let's give zero let's see what will happen so here i will use shape dot one because here we will receive zero and zero i think yeah something like this and we will use like this and i will say weight is equal to v next or we can say like this maybe maybe we can say like this and if epoch epoch module division 100 is equal to zero i will say print what print if iteration is iterations epoch and let's include let's include what let's include the cost and i will eat gradient w so what we need is that we need this gradient function gradient fn gradient fn so this is this weight right according to the formula according to the formula so uh, we have number of e uh, examples so what we said is that xt right so the cost cost is equal to um, m right so we said m is equal to length of can we say y length of y yes we can say like this and i will give x and y also m is equal to this one that's clear we have x x transpose we will get uh, the x uh, dot product of x and weight and minus y and we have y so it will be cost is equal to what cost is equal to x gets the dot product of this weight and we will minus it with uh, actual value and if we get this minus it will be the error and this error we need to get the dot product of this with x transpose and we will divide it to the m or we will multiply it one divided m if we have this one and we will return cost do you think is it good is it valid we have x so we have weight uh, we have x and y actually you know i will show you so it's normalized everything we have x we have y so i think let's try f uh, okay here some small problems and I'm missing two okay yeah yeah sure sure I will give x y x y actually cost here you know mm, it's not actually cost it's it's gradient so we can say the error here just error because it's a gradient so we can say error you know x dot so it will be x and weight minus actual y and squared we need square we need to make it square it will be square error if you don't want you can just skip it also so we have error for everything each uh, value so now it is uh, improving i guess in the end we we will come out with this weight you know so if you want we can commit it also but anyway so we competed computed it so we have iterations we have errors and if i print this weight 
this is weight of our linear regression with gradient descent so this is our value 2.7.5 uh, and minus 2 if we compare it to our uh, normal equations um, method 7.5 minus 2 7.5 minus 2 and something so now if you understand this difference difference is in what that we use gradient descent and it is iterative you can use learning rate and you can use some kind of other parameters you can give uh, initial value another value to initial value you can play around with gradient descent and it will compute despite the size of the matrix the size of the data set if size of data set too huge the first method a normal equation method uh, isn't efficient enough so this is gradient descent method so now let's plot it also you know plt dot scatter it was norm sizes and what norm prices yeah and plt dot plot we should i should give my prediction was what is x to weight and plot i will plot what the norm sizes and y prediction and i will say color equal to blue do you like blue and i will say that's enough <coughs> so this is our prediction y prediction of blue can we pre can we put uh, this one also yeah we can put let me to say y pred so let me to update it you know wait OLS, 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 wait, OLS, Y prediction, OLS, uh, OLS, and Y prediction, OLS. Okay, here everything is good, and I will put here, you know, chuck, 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 and Y pred OLS, and it will be red. If you want I will get a, a label it is gradient descent method this one is label equal to normal equation method less can we say like that method and this one let's plot it almost the same Our UI pred is this guy, this thing is with gradient descent. This one is normal equation. This is red, this is blue. So I plot it and you can see identical, almost identical. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, so I think like you, it doesn't make sense for your life, right? Maybe. So if you are a bit new, so what you can do is that let's minimize, like not say, let's say 100, you know, chuck, chuck, chuck. Here you can see the red line, we do only one iteration and we get the perfect line, the optimum line. In Great and descent way, we, we need iterations. We need iterations. And now we are in iteration 100. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and 1000. And we will reach kind of this uh, good optimum line. So again, I'm repeating. What's it, if, if someone asks you, what's the difference between uh, normal equation method and great and descent method, you should say confidently that Normal equation method is very useful if you have small data set. If your data set size is huge, big, you need to use gradient descent because it is more, much more efficient. That's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have questions, ask in comments. See you next time.